Welcome to the EXP group. Uh, in today's discussion on ACCA paper F2, Management Accounting, we want to cover a couple of concepts here. One is the uh, job and batch costing. We can look at job and batch costing as being uh, the process by which a company calculates costs which are specific to a customer order. In other words, it's a kind of uh, customization of the cost calculations based on the specific requirements of a job or order. We can think of this as being um, a builder, for example, to, to put a, a project to build a house and uh, calculating all the costs or some kind of services, for example, an audit uh, could be based on uh, consulting services could be a type of job costing. Batch costing is similar in the sense that we are specifically identifying batches and giving them uh, numbers and tracking the costs per batch. In contrast to job costing and batch costing, we have uh, a method of process costing which relates to the mass production of um, goods, identical products moving through a series of uh, processes. The uh, average cost per unit, therefore, becomes a question of accumulating and averaging uh, total cost of input. With some small adjustments here, we can see the scrap value of rejected units is pulled out. And the average cost is arrived at by dividing the costs by the number of units of input minus normal loss. In other words, this would be um, the good, the number of uh, good units uh, produced. Now normal loss may seem a strange name but really we can look at this as being equal to the expected loss or anticipated um, losses. In contrast to a normal loss we have to take into account as well abnormal gains and losses and these would be unexpected and because they are unexpected losses we would need to account for them at the same value as the good output, simply because we would have to deduct such unexpected losses in full as and when they occur. Another aspect uh, specific to process costing is the notion of equivalent units. This refers to output which, uh, to goods which are partly completed. So during or at the end of a stage of production, or at the end of a period, better said, if we have work in progress, instead of reporting uh, according to number of units or number of uh, items that we are partially completing, we're expressing the partially completed items in dollar value terms. And therefore, two items that are both 50% completed would together be equal to one equivalent unit. It's just a way of being able to account based on monetary value terms. Now, in cases when we have an opening work in progress uh, account, that means units which were started in a previous unit, uh, in a previous period, uh, but not finished, we have two ways of accounting for their costs. One way is called the weighted average method. In this, uh, in this method, the weighted average, we do not make a distinction between units that were begun in a previous period and those units which were begun and finished in the current period. We lump them all together into one pot and we take the total dollar cost associated with the uh, production of these units and we come out with an overall average number. In the first in first out method we make a distinction between opening with units we calculate the costs that were attached to those units from the previous period plus the costs in the current period and we make a distinction between this category of units and units which were started and finished in the current, the current periods. So we have two categories of units, even though they, at, when, they're, when they're all finished, they all look identical, but 
the opening whip units have a different history and the profile of costs attaching to them, which date from partially from a, a previous period. So these two methods are uh, to be kept distinct from one another and have to be applied uh, systematically in an exam uh, type uh, situation. Then we have joint products and byproducts. Joint products are two or more products that follow a common path in terms of processing until they reach what we call a point of separation. So we cannot distinguish the costs uh, or easily split up uh, physically the costs for the two items as long as they're traveling the common path. It's only when they split up and go their separate ways that we can talk about the costs as being uh, distinguishable between the two products. Uh, different methods to apportion such common costs. These joint costs can be called uh, common costs, could be market value or number of units that are produced or a net realizable calculation. Byproducts, by definition, are not, um, are, are incidental um, products, and therefore the revenues which they generate are A, going to be modest or small, not significant in comparison to overall revenues, and B, the revenues generated from selling byproducts, if, if it's possible to uh, recover some kind of value from them, will be, uh, will be used to reduce production costs. That's the way in which um, revenues from byproducts are treated from an overall cost perspective. Okay, so we can move on to the next part of the uh, F2 syllabus, which uh, deals with budgeting and standard costing. Let's just uh, think about this for a moment, what uh, budgeting is all about. It's a quantitative plan for the future. That's as simple and practical as one can get in terms of defining um, budgets. And budgets often are used uh, as a planning device for, um, for companies' activities. In addition, however, they communicate the objectives of the company, hopefully they, the budgetary targets will motivate uh, employees to um, perform well. It's also a way of exerting control within the business, to control over uh, expenses and, and the activities. And at the end of the period, it gives a, the company the chance to look back over the performance achieved and to evaluate it and uh, eventually to, uh, to reward good performance through bonuses, promotions, and so on. The candidate should uh, appreciate the fact that the budgeting uh, exercise follows a process. There's a systematic um, set of steps to it uh, in order to um, achieve a master budget. This consists of putting together a series of subsidiary budgets relating to sales, production, um, inventory, and so on, cost of sales, direct materials, practically everything that one would expect to see in uh, financial statements and in the profit and loss account are going to be um, budgeted for. The financial budget sequence in involves capital budgeting. This is for uh, capital expenditures, long-term spending cash budget. This is cash flows. And then finally putting together pro forma balance sheet and a statement of cash flows for the business. Here's a list of uh, typical operating budgets that the uh, candidate should be aware of. And uh, exam questions will relate to putting together based on numbers provided specific operating budgets. The principal budget factor refers to any major external factors which will impinge on or limit a business's ability to reach a certain volume of activity. So this is actually a big picture constraint which acts on the business and uh, serves as a starting assumption in the budgeting process. In other words, it has to be a common view as to what the 
uh, objectives and what is to be attained by the business as a whole before the various um, uh, operating budgets can be put together to add up to one uh, consistent and coherent whole. Next time we will discuss fixed and flexible budgets with uh, a numerical example.